my last video about revival and prophecy, I shared about the Princess Diana and Flowers removal prophecy. I shared how I wrote to Gerald Coates to express my discernment, my understanding that that particular word was a, a sign that this was really the Lord speaking and that how quick there was mourning so there would be quickly what the Lord said in there a move of God in the UK and that it was not in any way a sign the death of Princess Diana that, that was a, the time it would happen it was only a sign that it was the Lord speaking and how quick a demonstration of how quick he would move amongst the people of this nation so that's great news it's unfulfilled events which we can look forward to and, and there's another unfulfilled event uh, which we can all look forward to which I'd like to share now which I refer to Smith Wigglesworth prophecy Smith Wigglesworth was a man who uh, was brought up not just to become a Christian uh, but the Lord then led him to be baptized in the Holy Spirit to believe in healing and uh, had a ministry all over the world well, this was before the days of TV before the days of the internet and he died in 1947 and the Lord gave him a word to share for the church in the UK but relevant to the church all over the world because you'll see why during the next few decades again from 1947 there will be two distinct moves of the Holy Spirit across the church in Great Britain the first move will affect every church that is open to receive it and will be characterized by restoration of the baptism and gifts of the Holy Spirit the second move of the Holy Spirit will result in people leaving historic churches and planting new churches in the duration of each of these moves the people who are involved will say this is the great revival but the Lord says no neither is the great revival but both are steps towards it when the new church phase is on the way there will be evidenced in the church as something that has not been seen before the coming together of those with an emphasis on the word and those with an emphasis on the spirit when the word and the spirit come together there will be the biggest movement of the Holy Spirit that the nation and indeed the world has ever seen it will mark the beginning of a revival that will eclipse anything that has been witnessed within these shores even the Wesleyan and the Welsh revivals of former years the outpouring of God's Spirit will flow over from the UK to the mainland of Europe and from there will begin a missionary move to the ends of the earth Hallelujah now the first two phases, the first two steps, first two waves if you like the first two moves have happened then it says here when the new church phase is on the way when the uh, brilliance begins to fade there will be a coming together of those who emphasis on the word and those who emphasis on the spirit now, if it's not happened before, and these are emphasis on the word, as supposed to emphasis on the spirit, and these will generally not be people who have belief in the spirit of God being active, as has been evidenced in the first two waves. And these, you would know, are a whole group of churches, usually reformed in faith, so called Calvinists a strong emphasis on doctrine and the Bible not that these are unaware of the Bible, in fact they follow the support of the Bible but they are living the life of God in the Holy Spirit 
is slightly more important. And so, how on earth could you get these two groups to work together? Well, as you know, I, sh I wrote to General Coates. Well, for about a year, I was also in his church. It was known as Pioneer People. On the first Sunday I ever went there. Uh, before that, it was called the Cobham Christian Fellowship. And after a year, I was called into the office and asked to leave. Now, there were some things happened before that. Dale Gentry, a, a, a man who's been known as a prophet of God, had come and visited the church and had shared things with the church, a vision, and also shared things with Gerald. And when these things were being shared in church, I witnessed in my spirit that one of the things shared was that of a father figure and that he'll be a particular person. And as I shared this, I had a check in my spirit. This wasn't the person, this was just a desire that this would be the person. An Ishmael type recognition, as opposed to what the Lord wanted, Isaac. And making it happen, as opposed to making the Lord do it happen. And Dale Gentry had been very clear. What I say to you is in part. What I'm saying to you will only be a part. And you need to seek God for the rest. And I shared this at a time when I had no idea who his father figure was, so I began to pray, Lord, what, who's this father figure? And then the Lord points to me, what have I been teaching you? And, you know, what have I been doing with you? And so I shared with Gerald and the leadership team. Uh, I felt the Lord was saying this was me, and I didn't know why or how. But I don't know if any of them really saw the Lord's face about this. And here we are. Uh, a decade or two beyond and I still believe I am a father figure but more importantly I now have something to demonstrate that to you because as Moses in chapter 4 of Exodus had, was given signs to show to the people here this is God with me and these are from him to show I am being sent by him so I offer you this the things the Lord's taught me the meaning of born again, the understanding of Romans 8, 28 to 30, even the year of the Lord's return. I've done a recent video on, even 1 Timothy 2, 12 on women in leadership. Who else teaches these things in this way? And I've not got any great intellect, just the Lord teaching me. And not for me, but for you, his church, to be transformed into the church we should be working together. I had a dream in 98 of the church as an elephant with its left shoulder, its left leg, its left ear missing and then speaking sores as if the divisions were just sores. But church, your divisions are not sores. They prevent you from working from God's Spirit to anoint that region where you live. And God is calling for the churches to get round the round table and to begin to work together for, this, for the whole locality in which they are. Paul said to Titus appoint elders in every city and it was only one church per city. So all of you are just elders, leaders of the church in your area. Talk with the others and work together. For that's what Jesus wants. He wants his church back. But how he's going to do it also involves the youth. Because his name will be glorified. And I believe those who emphasize on the word and on the spirit will come together as they look at these things the Lord's taught me and I've shared. And that's good news. A revival is on our doorstep.